Strength and flexibility. So you wanna know how to combine both in an epic workout format that delivers insane results. Well, today we are going to lift the curtains and reveal our biggest secret of the UMS program. This is why we've become popular and how we have built a, an empire globally. It's the, all about the combination of strength and flexibility to deliver a strong, flexible and athletic body. Stick around to the end because we are going to reveal the biggest mistake people make that completely stifles any chance of progress. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Good morning everyone. In case we haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. This is my brother Yanni Burmeister. We are the co-founders of Unity Gym and the co-creators of the UMS, the Unified Movement System, formerly the FMS, where we teach you how to nourish and move instead of diet and exercise. And today is a really awesome show. I'm excited about this one. I did a post on Instagram on the weekend of me doing uh, a little bit of flexibility training at home on Saturday and then uh, some mobility training at the end. And I asked the question, I said, if you want to know how to get strong and flexible, how to, how to build strength and flexibility at the same time, leave a comment and we'll uh, get cracking on this. And we got a lot of comments on that post, a lot of interaction. And we've had uh, several comments recently on our YouTube channel. So we're gonna lift the curve up and show you guys how to do that today. How are you feeling about that, Yoni? Mate, I'm psyched. I'm psyched because I've had a good squat session this morning. Uh, even though it's deload week, I still squat 150 kilos and it felt good. And uh, I'm psyched because this is a good topic. Like, this is something that people are, one, asking for, but two, just getting wrong. I yeah, think the man. whole industry gets this wrong. I, I think the whole fitness industry gets this wrong. Now, I'm sure there's some anomalies out there that I haven't met, but so far, that by far and I'm, large, the biggest feedback we get for globally from people all over the world is that this is the first time they've ever come across a program that is so well balanced and delivers such good results in both strength and flexibility. Yeah, yeah, I agree 100%. Now I'm going to give a couple quick shout outs. Quok, thanks for joining in, brother. We love your work as always. Thanks for the love. And uh, Lars, thanks for joining in as well. Um, you know, I'm going to give you my, my opinion on this because I know one day we're going to get called out on this. One day there's going to be a guru, someone who's, uh, you know, kick ass at gymnastics or calisthenics or movement stuff who's going to call us out and say, oh, that's bullshit. There's all these programs out there that do that. And you know what? There are are people out there that can do what we're saying we are the only program that does this I'm not gonna there's no way I'm gonna say that we're the first people in the world that does this but I believe from the feedback that we're getting from our tribe that we're the first people that have put it into a systemized structured program that's affordable for the average person mm -hmm. where you don't have to pay a hundred US dollars or more a week to do private coaching with them online and yeah. I think that's what the biggest thing is our program costs you 49 US bucks a month and you get access to a structured systemized approach to this and we're getting told by hundreds of people around the world that they've never seen it before yeah. so yeah look let's get into it we don't want to blow our own trumpets for too long um, um, we've got let, let's get out on the gym floor. Basically, look, we've got three key points that we're going to teach you on how to get strong and flexible and how to write your programs to get this. But make sure you stick around to the end because we are going to deliver without a doubt the most important aspect to this. So if you don't stick around to the end of this show, you're going to miss out on the most important, the key ingredient of this. So let's get out there. I've got our notes. I'm going to be talking today. And uh, we've, we've basically got three key points that we're going to, you ready, Richie? Yep. We've got three key points that we're going to uh, talk about here. Now, the first key point that we're going to talk about is uh, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you through all three of the key points quickly and then we're gonna demonstrate it. So the first key point is that you are going to perform a one to one ratio of strength and flexibility. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. What that means is you do one set of strength training, you do one set of flexibility training. One set of strength, one set of flexibility. And we do it during the workout at the same time. So basically you have no rest. It's what we call active recovery. So the traditional way of doing strength and flexibility is that you do a strength training session and then you do a flexibility session. We've found that to be ineffective for the average person because it requires a very, very long training time and it, or it requires two training sessions a day. Now there are people out there in the world that do that and kudos to you. For us with running a business, with being parents, Yanni and me, it hasn't worked for us. We haven't been able to do two sessions. It's 
also never, we've never had a client successfully do it. Yep. So you might be a personal trainer or your profession is in the fitness industry. Or you might be somebody that literally puts everything else in your life second except yeah. for your training. But for us in North Sydney, our clientele are driven corporate professionals. They're people that have careers, that have families. And when we've tried to say to people, okay, this is the strength training, now you've got to go and do your stretching in your own time. Not one single person ever did it. No. And no one ever got it's anywhere with it. I yeah. think we can put it to rest that it's only a very unique person that will ever do that. Yep. So it's, it's, not, it's not something that we teach. So we basically, the way that we stumbled upon this uh, process that we do is that we just said, well, you know, we tried doing stretch classes and strength classes at the gym. And guess what? Everybody did the one that they wanted to do. So you got the people turning up to the stretch classes every day and never doing the strength training and then vice versa. So, so what about the person out there that says, well, why don't we do strength on Monday, flexibility training on Tuesday, strength on Wednesday, flexibility training on Thursday, and so That's on and so forth. That's a great question, Yanni. I'm glad you asked it. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why we don't like that approach is because you don't get enough volume. Yep. If, uh, if you want to achieve real results, um, anything like what we're doing and like what we're aspiring to do, you need to be training strength and flexibility five to six days a week. Um, you just don't get the results that we want to achieve um, with ourselves without that. I mean, I'm talking... Now, let me cut in because there's a caveat to that comment, which is that maintenance of strength and flexibility is far easier than actually getting there in the first yeah, place. Yeah, that's right. So you'll come across gurus who will say, that's bullshit. I, I train three or four days a week and look at me, I'm so strong and flexible. But they're already there. Getting from a beginner level or even an intermediate level to a mastery level requires, I'm gonna go as far as to say six days a week of training. Yeah, and, and then the other one is that the gurus out there, um, there's people out there that are just freaks. There are people out there that are just naturally they just took to this stuff like a fish to water and they're both, like we've all, we all know Let's those people, you know? Let's give a demonstration. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, all right, all right, all right. So we've got, um, the first thing we're gonna do, so a one-to-one -one ratio. The second point is that you do opposing muscle groups in the same workout. What that means is if we do upper body strength training, we do lower body mobility. So I'm gonna give you a real quick example of that. Let's say I'm doing my bent arm strength day and I'm doing my uh, pull-ups, my vertical pull. So I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna do a couple of reps or a set or whatever of pull-ups and then I'm gonna come straight down and I'm gonna get into some lower body mobility. And what we're doing just for this show, I'm gonna show you a couple of hamstring stretches. Uh, we start our total beginners off with a single leg good morning. So from here, I've just done my pull-ups, then I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna do 10 reps of my single leg good morning. So this is a loaded mobility stretch, okay? So, from, yeah, it's fine. So I'm gonna come, uh, I'm gonna do my, my 10 reps where I'm, I'm coming forward, I'm doing my single leg good morning. This is a, a stretch that we teach in our loaded mobility routine. Um, and then I'll go back and I'll do my pull-ups again, or actually I wouldn't do that. I'd go back and I'd do my vertical push pattern because we always pair opposing movements. So we do a vertical pull with a vertical push. So I'll do my pull-ups, then I'll grab my dumbbells and I'll do my shoulder press or I'll do my handstand push-ups. Then I'll do another set of the hamstring stretch, and then I'll do another set of pull-ups, then hamstring stretch, then shoulder press, then hamstring stretch, and I'll do that through my entire workout. So I'll finish my vertical push-pull, I'll move on to my next movement, uh, my next strength movement, and I'll also move on to my next flexibility movement. Now, I just wanna see if this ties into the third point, what I'm about to do. Uh, it, it, it doesn't. Um, so what I'm gonna show now as well is, this ties into what we're gonna talk about at the end of this show, which is being progressive. What I just showed you there is our beginner's mobility that we do, so when people come to Unity Gym and start with us, that's for the hamstrings, that's the first movement that we show. So the first, the first I'll just jump in, the first loaded mobility sequencing that we do is all body weight. Yep. We teach the person to master their body weight and use their own body weight to develop flexibility or to train for flexibility. And we also do unilateral work so that each side works individually because if you've got one side that's stronger um, than the other or one side that's more flexible and you go straight into bilateral movements like what I'm about to show you, uh, then you'll run into problems with that as well because you always favour your dominant side and the imbalances that you've got just get worse. Yeah, And that's a very important point to, to drive home. It's the principle of structural balance which is a key principle in our UMS Strength Essentials course that we've just done a flash sale for, but yep. you have to balance your body. And mm -hmm. that is by balancing left and right limb, 
and also balancing agonist antagonist muscle joint um, systems in each joint. Mm -hmm. So there's a formula, there's a proven formula that we um, teach in it to our tribe, to our UMS tribe, and that's sort of what Rad's talking about there. Mm. So let's, uh, what, what, what I'm going to show you now as well is because we are going to give you guys a little example of how progression works with mobility. Um, Progression with strength training is, is more commonly understood, so we're not going to talk about that. Um, you know, you go to a, a harder progression, like so a pull-up will go from a supinated pull-up to a pronated grip pull-up, or we'll add weight, or whatever it is. There's a chin up or a pull-up. Yeah, yeah, chin up versus a pull-up. Um, for mobility, it's, it's a less understood thing. People don't understand how to, prog actually not mobility, flexibility. People don't understand how to progress flexibility training, and we're going to talk about the difference between flexibility and mobility in a sec. So an example of progressing your flexibility training for the hamstrings is to go from the single leg good morning, like this, to a um, bilateral loaded mobility stretch, where what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna retract my shoulders, go into excessive hyperextension so that I make sure that all of the mobility is coming from the hamstrings. So he's talking about hyperextension here in the lower they probably, back. They probably can't hear you because you're not, I'm, I'm, okay, so I'm talking about hyperextension in my lower back. So I'm not doing this. It's not a Jefferson curl. It's a loaded hamstring stretch and we hold that one for uh, about 30 seconds is a really, yeah, 10 deep breaths. About 30 seconds. Okay, so that's an example of upper body strength, lower body mobility. So that's our second point, a training opposing muscle groups. Now Yanni's going to show you some examples of lower body strength, upper body mobility. So let's just say that Yanni's done a set of back squats. So we're working on our squat day and Yanni's just done his back squats and then he's, the first one we're going to do for the upper body, so he's strength trained his lower body, now he's going to stretch his upper body and for the example for today we're going to show some internal and external rotation. So at the basic level, Jan is doing some passive stretching for his, uh, here he's stretching his external rotators, so he's pushing his arm into internal rotation which means he's stretching the external rotators and then here he's going to stretch the uh, uh, bicep, this is an example of a bicep stretch, okay? Pec stretch, uh, pec stretch bicep stretch, so all unilateral and he's, and he's just working on uh, uh, basic flexibility for the upper body, okay? Now we're going to move into... So just give him a demonstration. Okay, so this is a, this is a demonstration of... Beginner version of an external rotation stretch, so we've just done... We've just done the whole rotator cuff and the muscles that are most responsible for internally rotating the shoulder, which is the bicep, the pec major, and the pec minor. Uh, that's the basic level, and now we'll demonstrate a more. So that's at the. So that's what we've just shown you. There is some some examples of what we use for beginners for their stretching for the upper body between sets. So the first thing we look for is we want to open up these rounded shoulders. So everything that we're doing for the upper body is working on opening up that posture. And then, it, then we start working on developing shoulder flexion. So being able to bring your arms above your head so you can start doing handstands and overhead squats and things like that, or Olympic lifting if you wanted to do safely. So what Jan is doing now, now we're moving on to an intermediate example of just, upper body just, mobility. Just explain that I'd then go back to my other set of squats. So, so he does his, he, so he does his, again, he does, he, he does one set of one type of upper body stretch, then he goes to the hamstring, which is the opposing movement that we use for a squat. Then he goes back to the upper body stretch, then he goes back to the squat. Then he does an upper body stretch, then a hamstring uh, strengthening. Upper body stretch, squat. Upper body stretch, hamstring strengthening. So we're always doing opposing muscle groups and then opposing parts of the body. So opposing muscle groups for strength training and then an opposing part of the body for stretching. Now this is our uh, a progressive way of developing mobility and end range strength for the upper body. So Yanni's gonna do what's called uh, external rotate. You wanna use six kilos for this, all right? Three, two, one, then he's gonna relax. Three, two, one, relax. Three, two, one, relax. Now Yanni's gonna, what he's gonna do is he's gonna do three, this is just an example of something we do for the upper body for end range strength. And what he's doing here, he's doing drop sets of three second pause, three reps on three different weights. And then at the end, after he's done the last one, he's gonna do five ballistic reps, and then he's gonna do a hold. So what we're doing now here is, 
Because Yanni's worked to develop flexibility in his external rotation pattern for his upper body, now we're working on creating end range strength so that becomes an, an active uh, range of motion for him. So again, this is just another example of how we progress uh, upper body uh, flexibility training that we do. Now, the last thing that I'll say, uh, you, want to, you want to do the internal one? Oh, we don't need to yet, okay? So, I mean, there's so many different things that we do, of course. We're just showing you guys examples and, and breaking down the principles. And if you hang in there, if you feel that we've been talking a little bit too fast, we are going to bring this all together when we get back in the studio at the end. So, um, I'm just going to make sure that I've clarified that. The way we do things is if you forget the mobility, you, do, you, you have a, um, opposing muscle group movements that you train or um, opposing... Uh, Opposing muscle groups or opposing movements, so agonist and antagonist. So example would be a vertical push pattern, so a shoulder press with a vertical pull pattern, a pull up. For the lower body, an example would be a squat, which is a quad and glute dominant exercise versus a hamstring curl, which is a hamstring dominant exercise. Um, so then between each set of strength training, you're doing stretching for the other end of the body. So if we're strength training our lower body, we're stretching our upper body. If we're strength training our upper body, we're stretching our lower body. The last point... We do, we do a one-to-one -one ratio of those unless there is an existing imbalance. So for instance, you're way stronger than you are flexible, then you wouldn't do a one-to-one -one ratio. You'd do a two-to-one flexibility to strength ratio yep. and vice versa. If you were really bendy but really weak, then you would focus on strength. You do a lot a more strength, yeah, that's yeah. right. But for, for those of us that are more balanced, then it's we're a one-to-one -one ratio. We're assuming everyone's perfectly balanced yeah. and we're doing a one-to-one -one <laughs> ratio. Yeah, and then the last, the last the point, the last point that we want to drive home for you guys is that during the workout, we do flexibility training. After the workout, we do mobility training. And here's the difference. Everything that we just showed you is flexibility training. There's a lot of different ways of, of, of training flexibility. There's stretching, there's loaded stretching, there's end range strength, there's contract relax, there's um, you know, uh, drop sets like what Yanni was doing, all designed to increase your flexibility. And when you do it, it generally leaves you pretty sore and fatigued afterwards. Like if you did a good flexibility workout, you'll be sweating by the end of it. You're like, oh man, that really wrecked me. It isn't like a, just a, a relaxing stretch. Mobility training is an umbrella term for any movement that takes your joint through its full range of motion. So if I go like this with my shoulder and force it through its full range of motion, that is mobility training. If I come down and do like a 360 hip mobility exercise, like what we've done in a lot of tutorials on our YouTube channel recently, just taking my hips through their full range of motion, that's mobility training, okay? And what we do is we do mobility training at the end of our session, sometimes only for about three to five minutes, sometimes for 10 minutes. But the idea of it is two things. Number one, when you do mobility training after flexibility, it sets in stone in the nervous system that the, that the new range of motion that you've just worked hard to create is accessible and you can use it. So that's a really big important thing. Number two is that it makes sure that you don't lose the flexibility that you've worked hard to gain in your other sessions because we'll only do an upper body flexibility session like what Yanni showed twice a week. So you've got five other days of the week where you can lose all that flexibility if you're not working to maintain it. Um, I think everything else we can go into the studio to, uh, to bring this in for a landing. So, <clears throat> so Yanni's going to talk now on, uh, on the, the really important take homes here. There's three points here that are critical for understanding of how we, we combine strength and flexibility together to get really, really good results, not only with ourselves, but with our tribe members all around the world. Yeah, Lars, just to, just to um, reiterate, that's exactly right. Um, with the exception of an absolute beginner, if you're an absolute beginner and the <coughs> weight that you're lifting in a strength session is very, very light, 
And it's more about laying down the neurological pathway and greasing the groove at that point. Then you can combine the same muscle groups. And it's actually even proven to be beneficial for that beginner person because when you um, do flexibility training, you open up a new... Um, uh, you open up a new range of motion and then when you do strength training on that same muscle group, you strengthen it and reinforce it in the same that's way actually, that that's our mobility the, training does. That's actually the best way to develop flexibility, but it comes at the cost of, of strength, strength development. That's exactly right. So you have to be... Um, you that, that's exactly right. You have to make the, the clarity of what's more important to you. And if you want the balance between strength and flexibility, which is what this show was about, then you would not do that yeah. but if you want flexibility at any cost then that would be the best, best way, way to do, to do it, it. The, but look, it will come at the cost of strength once you're at an intermediate or advanced level the rule mm -hmm. is that you don't strength train you don't um flexibility train the same muscle group that you're strength training yeah, when definitely. you're a beginner you absolutely do do it it's it's beneficial to do so yeah uh, i hope that clears that up so my f the final point that I wanted to, to, to really reiterate, which let, is... Let me just answer Karina's okay. question. So where does cardio fit into the system? It doesn't. Um, the, the, just the saying cardio makes me want to throw up a little bit. No, I'm Don't joking. Be silly. I'm joking. So cardio, the way we do cardio is we do a high intensity interval training circuit uh, at the end of our workout using movements that complement the strength training that we do. And for those of you that are in the UMS online program, the only reason why we don't include that in what you do, we say it very openly, we encourage people to do cardio. And the research says you only need to do it twice a week for about 10 minutes if you go really, really hard. So 15 minutes if you're not going that hard to still get a great result. But we just don't want to overwhelm people, you know? So we keep the program about strength and flexibility. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, cardio is very important, but yeah, you just you just need to make sure that it's like prioritize. You know, yeah. a lot of people mm -hmm. do cardio for the wrong reason. They do cardio for weight management, uh, and it's not the best way to manage your weight mm -hmm. at all. The yeah. best way to manage your weight is a uh, is a lifestyle intervention where you eat the right food and do the right type type of movement and keep a nice, robust, healthy metabolism. Um, that's pretty much it. The final point, guys, no, and this on, is something. You, no, 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 no. no and sorry. this is something that people are getting really wrong is that with flexibility training, just like strength training, you have to follow the key scientific or science-based strength and conditioning principles. And the three that I'm gonna give you today that are an absolute must, absolute essential, it's either, this is the difference between mediocre <coughs> or magnificent results, is that you understand the concept of supercompensation. So when you stimulate the body, your body is going to regress for a short period of time, and then it's gonna compensate for that stimulation and if you catch it with another training session, which is another bout or dose of stimulation at the right time, you'll progress and take a big leap forward in your strength and ability or flexibility. So what Rad said is, you know, we do these hard flexibility routines only twice a week because we need 72 hours. Twice a hours. week on one part of the body group, sometimes three times a week yep. on areas that people need a lot of work on, but that's down to a personalized level, like for what we tell our tribe and the way we prescribe things, it's twice a week yeah. for each movement. Because you need around 72 hours. It varies slightly to, from person to person, but the, 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 the sort of standard number is 72 hours before stimulus, or you miss out on the full effect of supercompensation curve. The second one is progressive overload. You must understand the concept of progressive overload. And Rad did talk about it out there. We gave you some examples of how to go from a basic internal rotation, external rotation stretch, which is just an isometric stretch uh, or a passive stretch, um, uh, to then doing active uh, flexibility training, the, the drop sets and things like that. And then the final one is that you've got to follow proper periodization, which again, we use those examples of going from easy to hard, going from two days a week to three days a week of flexibility on the same muscle group, undulating your intensity and volume from high intensity focal point to a focal point of high volume sessions. Like you need to understand how to put this together into a program. And like the, I could keep going and, and naming all of the eight principles of uh, strength and conditioning that we teach in our UMS program, but those are the three keys. Like those are the difference between uh, between results and plateau, basically. You know. And yeah, you know, I mean, in all honesty, guys, um, consume as much info as you can, and and really do it. But there's a reason why Yanni and I know what we know, and that's because 
in our earlier days when we were younger, we invested heavily in training with people that knew more than us. There's an there's an aspect of that you can really learn good stuff from YouTube videos like this from good teachers like us. But there comes a time when you have to make a commitment and choose somebody that you believe has what you want and follow everything that they've got. And the only way that you're ever going to do that is if you work with them. We definitely, you know, I mean, the amount of courses that we've done, the amount of workshops that we've done. Yanni and I, when we were first in our, in our first years of being a personal trainer, we paid personal trainers that were way better than us to teach us the stuff that we know. Yeah. Um, and that's why we know what we know. You, you, you need to find somebody that really knows their stuff that you can work with. Um, because those, prin those three principles that Yanni just said, um, the super compensation, the progressive overload and periodization, Man, like you can understand it, you can hear what we say here, but to actually put that into something that is working and is delivering consistent results without plateauing and is changing every six weeks for years yeah. in front of you, that takes a lot of work to understand how to do properly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for the guys tomorrow, that commented. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing a show. We had a lot of interest in this one on uh, golfer's elbow and tennis elbow. It's specifically about forearm tendonitis. Not just forearm tendonitis, but how to condition your arms to be able to withstand the punishment that calisthenics and weightlifting delivers and never get tendonitis. So on one hand, we're gonna teach you how to overcome it and how to we're gonna teach you how to use periodization and progressive overload to go from a state of being injured and having tendonitis to not having it. And we're also gonna teach you how to recognize when it's coming on before it happens, when you get that little bit of an ache and pain and what to do to stop it from ever happening. Yeah. So that's gonna be coming tomorrow. That's gonna to be a really good show. I hope you guys hang out for that one. Awesome, guys. Uh, glad you could join us. We'll see you all soon. Health is about performance, not just body. You better be willing to accept <laughs> what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity.